So during this presentation, I'll speak about the Oracleize Oracle solution and some of the things that we have in the workings. So um, given the circumstances, there are many smart contracts that need to get external data. Think about web APIs or from any data source. Um, still, decentralized networks like Ethereum have an, the inherent limitation in not being able to reach out the internet. So smart contracts live like in a walled garden, and they cannot simply open a socket and fetch external data. So this is why there are many different solutions called as oracles um, to pull or push data, external data to the blockchain. So we'll focus during this presentation on the first approach listed in, the, in this slide. So this is the one used by Oracleize, and as we speak, this is the most widely used on uh, the public blockchain. So one of the pros of this approach is that it's fully transparent in the sense that both the query and the results are permanently stored on the blockchain. Another advantage is that we can use any data source available on the internet, so any web API potentially, since there is no need for them to adapt to the blockchain they have no knowledge of the blockchain and they doesn't have to. And another advantage is that there is no trust line open with the Oracle. So the Oracle cannot simply tamper with the data as with attestation, we can move the trust away from the Oracle to attestators. We've seen a bit who these attestators are. So this is the logic flow. What you have is a smart contract sitting on Ethereum that can reach out the internet via Oracleize. The way they do so is simply by using um, the Oracleize query function. So this function essentially is an event. So our off-chain engine can listen to these events and fulfill the request. So essentially we are the one opening uh, the connection with the remote web service. We get the result along with what we call authenticity proof and we send both of them back to the contract. So this is asynchronous. And um, there are different approaches, actually, to implement these authenticity proofs. So these authenticity proofs are cryptographic um, signatures that can enable the smart contracts and any external auditor to verify that the data being provided by the Oracle has not been tampered with. And that the result that the smart contract is receiving is really the one sent by the external uh, data source. So the first one is based on an external project called TLS Notary. This is the only one available today on the Ethereum mainnet since September last year. And the way it works, just briefly, is that when the client, the client being Oracleize, initiate a TLS session with a web service, the client secret is split in half so that Oracleize just, um, just has half of it and the other half the other half is secured by um, a piece of code whose correct execution is ensured via the Amazon Web Service Sandbox concept. So the way it works is that we get a cryptographic proof out, which doesn't prove that the data has not been tampered. It just proves that there was some kind of cooperation between the notary server running on Amazon Web Service and Oracleize. So this means that if you do trust Amazon being honest, then Oracleize is being honest as well. So there is a trust in Amazon with Amazon being an attestator. Another approach that we are presenting today, um, you can check out uh, the paper that we are releasing this afternoon, uh, is based on a different approach. So the first one, the TLS notary one, is essentially a software attestation. This one is an hardware-backed one. We call it Android proof. And essentially, it does leverage two uh, techniques, technologies. The first one is QSEE, which is the Qualcomm TEE, Trusted Ex Execution Environment uh, Solution, and Android Safety Net. So by using both of them, we can basically verify that um, there is an open source piece of code fetching the data from the web service, which is running in a secured, hardware-backed, um, Android-based device. The third one that we are presenting is slightly different because it doesn't 
prove that the data has not been tampered with when fetching data from an external data source, but it's based on Intel SJX. So we have already seen it with the Cripplets, um, with the Cripplets presentation. Intel SJX, again, is capable of verifying that a given piece of code, a subset of C essentially, is running in a secure um, Intel CPU-backed um, sandbox, and there is the um, Intel signature on the correct execution of the code. So um, this process is essentially close, uh, called Enclave Remote Attestation and works via the Intel Attestation Service. And we use this to solve one of the very issues that we have seen in the last few days in many talks, which is the difficulty of getting reliable on-chain random data, uh, random numbers, right? Um, so with a random data source that you can use via Oracleize, what you get out is a random number which is generated by a low-level Intel SGX-backed instruction, and you can verify the correct execution, meaning that the random data was really um, uh, random if you do trust the Intel solution. So again, here, we, are, we, have, we have just seen two different attestators, um, so Google, or Qualcomm if you want, and uh, Intel. So what we have seen so far with all these th three different authenticity proofs is attestation as a service, essentially. So different kind of um, software and hardware attestation that we can use to move the trust away from the untrusted small startup Oracle to um, a trusted entity, which is a much bigger company. Of course, you don't want to trust a single corporation. But the assumption that we are making here is that few um, uh, few trusted uh, companies or attestators in this case uh, are less likely to uh, mm, act all as bad actors compared to a network of untrusted anonymous players. So via Oracleize, you can specify the proof that you want to get out. So the kind of um, authenticity proof that you want the Oracleize infrastructure to generate to fetch this kind of data. And of course, you can specify more than one proof. So you can get the Android proof, the TLS notary proof, et cetera, on the same request, meaning that if all the proofs are valid and the result is sti has still been tampered with, it would mean that at the same time, at the same exact time, um, Android, Qualcomm, Amazon, and Google were all providing the same wrong data, which is pretty unlikely. So the last thing that we are presenting today, um, and that it's available in our documentation, um, is the off-chain computation. So this is yet another uh, solution to the limitation, the constraints of the EVM, meaning that if you want to execute any piece of code, if you want to reuse any library, external library, or if you have concerns related to the gas limit, in some cases you might want to delegate to an off-chain context the execution of this code. And the approach that we follow here is, again, the one based on attestators, so attestation. Uh, and what we do, essentially, is extending the base Amazon Web Service Sandbox concept introduced by TLS Notary. And uh, with this extended concept, you can execute in uh, a safe um, Amazon Web Service-backed lockdown instance any piece of code, and you can get out a, an, an authenticity proof. So this authenticity proof can be verified by anybody, and um, the, the way it works is that you define a receipt. Um, so this is, there is an example here using, for example, the Python NumPy library. And we can get a result out. Um, we distribute it over IPFS. And um, in, uh, in the Oracleize query, we specify as data source the computation meta data source. And as query, we specify the IPFS multi -hash. So what happens is that Oracleize uh, that does initiate uh, this secure instance generate the honesty proofs, and the verification steps are essentially based on an extended uh, verification of the authenticity proofs that I have ever just explained before. Um, so what you get out is the proof that the result is really coming from a correct execution in an off-chain context of a single instance of this piece of code. So there is not any more this this challenge game, but it's more like um, an auditor-based um, approach. So thank you all for the attention, and I will be around, so come find me if you have any question. We are looking for feedbacks, and we are releasing, as I said, the Android paper later today.
So please give us some feedbacks, and thank you for the attention again. Thank you very much, Thomas.